like as I get out of the drop pod, or where, where do you think like I should start the timer out to start this? Uh, I think yeah, once you get out of the timers, or you can start right when you get out of the pod if you want. It's I'm assuming it's not too specific. Yeah, it's just difficult to choose when to. Actually, I'll I'll just let's start it like when I'm able to first like see things. Sure. Three. Wait. Okay. Yeah. After this. Three, two, one. Go. Oh, it, oh, yep, it started. Okay. Very weird and interesting shots fired this year. Uh, I am, uh, I'm Trouble. I play this video game. Commentator is Rylan. He also plays this video game. Yep, hi, I'm Rylum. Uh, Trouble's a lot faster at this game than I am, but this is Halo 3 ODST. We're going to be doing the full game on easy, and this is the first level. Prepare to drop, so Trouble, talk a bit about what you're doing here in this first clear. So here I'm going to throw two frag grenades and clear that first area, and then SMG down everything else in order to start this RNG sleep timer phone, which is very funny. Yeah, there's actually not a lot of RNG in this game, but uh, this is definitely one of them. This timer for when this phone is, you're able to activate it is on a random timer between, I don't remember the specific times, but do you know that off the top of your head? The fastest recorded is 10 seconds, and the slowest recorded is 28 seconds, but the 28 seconds is due to a glitch involving checkpoints. Yeah, there I got so, it actually pretty yeah. fast. I think that was like 11 or 12 seconds. I was going to say that was very quick. That's much faster than I usually get. And so the rest of the level here is basically we're going to be walking through this courtyard. There's a bunch of grunts. Going to try to do a nade boost here. That was very good. And then we just got to find the first clue, which of course we know where that is. And we're going to be making our way there too. And going to have to do some staircase climbing here. Got to melee the bodies to bless the run. Never works <laughs> it, though. It works every time, I swear. You got you to <laughs> melee them. And then once we get to the top here, then we'll be getting to our first main level of the run, and that will be Teari Plaza. So that one's a lot of fun to watch. Uh, I'll recommend watching, going to haloruns.com and checking out some of the runs at this level because I'm sure Trouble will do a great job on it, but this level has a lot of neat tricks to get through it quicker. So starting up here, we got a hog launch. Let's see, get the three nades placed. That was pretty good. Definitely better than the better. hog launches I do. I, I had a pretty bad hog. That hog is also RNG. If you have a certain hog, uh, it will... Um, it'll give you a better launch. There I really only saved, like... I actually didn't save any time. <laughs> average of like good players that don't do that trick get like 25s and then this first area here kill some grunts hopefully trying to get a plasma grenade it doesn't look like we got one there and we are one walking there drop it either. so usually we would do a little truck launch here well that was a pretty good launch into that at least to make up for the lack of plasma grenade but usually we would uh, knock over a container on that truck back there and it could uh push us forward, but it's uh, very weird without a plasma grenade. I believe there's some ways to do it with the frag, but uh, I wouldn't, I, I, I don't know how to go about it myself. It's really weird. Yeah, the frag version is pretty hard. I, I never go for it, and whenever I do ILs, I just pray that I get a get a plasma grenade, because I just reset if I don't. And coming Here. up to this final area here, yeah, he's going to Almost Plasma the Brute there, or with the Plasma Pistol, hoping he would get mad, but he didn't. Yep, no Berserk. Whoa, hang on. 
And there's also another trick you can do there called Hunter Car Boost, but uh, I don't think many people do it in full game runs, and if they do, they're, they're different. They're just built different. It's not extremely consistent. Oh, a nice slide at the end there, right to the end. Is it okay, Tyari? Yeah, 153, definitely respectable. It is one second slower than the Tyari in my PB. And now we're coming up to a section that's uh, unique to Halo 3 ODST compared to other games, but in between, or other Halo games, is uh, in between the levels you have to go through the streets and find the next clue. Which is not as eventful, uh, but there is still some tricks and some uh, launches that we can do to try to make that go quicker. Plasmonades, Sedge. Uh, here coming up, I'm going to throw a grenade at my feet and hopefully get a good launch. That was pretty mid. But that piece of debris there, you can just throw a grenade and it can launch you pretty far. You can't get to this door, I don't think, but you can get to like around there. Now there's another strat that comes up here. Are you going to try to get these brutes angry or are you just going to... Let, let them have their day. I know you didn't get any plasmas. Uh, I always go for it, but it never, oh, never works. <laughs> it's like one in four, I think the world record holder said. Or not one in four. It's it's like uh, it's a twenty five. It's twenty five percent chance. Yeah, but there he was just hoping that, of course, the Brute would get angry and potentially run and try to punch us and hit us, which would give us a couple boosts. But, yeah, it's not as common as you would hope. Yep, there's only one... There, there's a few other places that you can go for it. I only go for one of them. Um, the record holder goes for, both, goes for both after this, but no one really else goes for uh, those... Uh, go, goes for the Brute Berserk on other levels. Uh, here you throw a grenade at this coil, you get a pretty good boost. Which I did right there. And then the rest of the level is pretty much just walking. You'll also notice that uh, Trouble is doing a lot of jumps on downward slopes. Uh, these are slide jumps. They're also common in almost every other Halo game, I believe. I'm not sure if CE. But, it's like uh, two just in if... CE. Yeah, if you uh, basically crouch and then like let go of crouch right before you jump and then jump, you'll gain quite a bit more distance and speed, and it works really well on downward slopes. There's a lot of them that you have to do in this game. It almost becomes second nature when you play through ODST and speedrun it enough times. There's two I just did off that like little curb in the chair. No one else really does. I don't think it saves time, but it probably saves like a few frames or something. Now we're coming up to Uplift Reserve. Now this is basically just a short driving level. Um, I believe Trouble does this one nade strat at the beginning here, which is a lot safer and probably a lot smarter. So right here, just jumping over this and using a nade to get a little boost. That's a very nice jump there. And gonna laser this uh, brute with a brute shot here. Um, just basically helps your chances of getting out here without being flipped over. And there's also choppers, you gotta watch out for those, they're also a lot of fun. Some people basically... laser the choppers, but I don't ever really have any problems with them, so I just never go about it. Oh, I'm lucky. Yeah, basically what you want to do there is just drive through as quick as possible without hitting too many things or getting anything to slow you down, and then take this ghost. This is uh, actually Rylum's level, he is much better at, the, at this level than I am. <laughs> and here we got the cliff climb. Uh, that's a uh, oh. unfortunate, but it worked. A little, a little slow, but it didn't fall off, so that's good. You actually get a checkpoint right as you're going up it, so it's not too bad if you miss it. But still, you shouldn't be missing it. It's not too bad. It's the hardest trick in the game. Don't listen to him. <laughs> and then this is the second platoon. All you got to do is just drive right through. There's not really a whole lot you need to say about it. That was a nice little flick up there with the lift angle to so make sure you don't get caught on the edge there. For the longest time I did the wrong pathing, but someone else in the community told me like to do a different pathing, path and when I tried it out, 
I could not do it unless I like flicked up. What the hell so I, I I do that, and uh, the person I said as my rival, Siphon up there, that's uh, skilled, actually made fun of me for doing that recently while I was practicing. <laughs> thought it was weird, but I I, I skill issue, so I skill issue a lot. So I mean, if it works, it works. Yep. And yeah, the rest here is just going over a few more walls, uh, a lot of tight lines. There is actually a really interesting strat, that's the word I'll use, interesting, to get this level done a lot quicker. And by a lot, I mean like 10 seconds. Uh, but it requires a very hard to do trick. 215, that's really good. Yep. Three seconds slower than my PB. And like, what do you have, a 209? Uh, 209's my uh, ILPB and gold splits uh, 210. Damn, that's a crazy gold <laughs> split. Yeah, I'm not as good as it as I was before. Here comes a debris launch. See if it goes. Nope, didn't oh, no. Got stuffed a bit. That happens. Now, coming up on this streets level here, you'll notice that uh, Trouble's not actually going to go for the next level that the game intends you to go to. And that's kind of the benefit of this game being semi-open world, is that to a degree you can pick which levels you can go to. So instead of heading towards uh, Kazingo Boulevard, uh, Trouble's actually going to be going towards a uh, Oni Alpha site. Uh, also something that we didn't discuss near the beginning, uh, why I unload my SMG. Everyone asks this when they see a... ODSC speedrun. It is to prevent carryover into the next Mombasa streets in order to have a fresh set of nades, grenades, or debris launches and such. And also for a uh, later level, uh, it's very useful to have uh, grenades. Uh, here was an example of going for another brew boost, but every grunt had a needler instead of a plasma pistol, so that's unfortunate. Funny, because at the beginning of this run, I said there wasn't too much RNG, but it seems we've <laughs> encountered some in every single level. <laughs> yeah, except for Uplift, because Uplift is yeah. purely skill-based. Yeah, that's why it's the best. That's why it's the best level. It's not. A later, <laughs> a later level is. It's my level. Everyone hates it. Oh, I got stuck on that oh, chair. Oh, I know, I know what level you're talking about now, too. Okay. Shout out to John and Pawn for this slide. It's called Jonder Slide. Very nice. That was a very nice one. And, now, uh, up. Yeah, oh, yeah. Pretty much just the rest of the level is just walking. What were you going to say? I was going to say, coming up in this next section, this is where uh, New Game Plus, uh, since we were playing on a file right here that has all of the audio logs, this is where. You don't need all the audio logs to unlock this, but this is why this can help. Is that Trouble's going to be getting a mongoose here, which will make the street sections from this point on go a lot faster. Yes, it literally saves minutes. So that's actually the reason why we go to Oni Alpha site first, is so we can grab this mongoose before we go to it. Now, a lot of people who are good at this game are really good at the mongoose driving. Trouble's doing a very good job right now. Me, I'm not the best at it, but it's, you know, as long as you're good enough, you, you can get a decent enough time. You'll see some pretty bad driving on the next streets. I promise and right that. <laughs> and right after this door, you come right up to the next clue, which oh, will lead no. us to the next level. Oh, okay. We're still on the level. We're good. We're good. And that's only Alpha Site coming up right now. Starting off, we're gonna do a double grenade boost, which I believe you can only do this, do that in this game. But at least the way that I just did it, because of the throwing animation and the ODST just being like, I believe the ODST. Uh, I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna speak on it just in case I spread misinformation. Cause you know we don't like misinformation when it comes to speedrunning. Um, 
but it feels like you take less damage when you throw a grenade in ODST compared to when you're playing as the Chief or Noble Six. Or Locke if you're playing the cringe game, but we're not going to talk about that game. It's not a game. Hey, 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 we're not having any Halo 5 slander in here. I've okay, never played it, good but... speedrun, <laughs> good multiplayer, bad campaign. <laughs> And then coming up here, uh, it's just going to be a little clear in the courtyard here. So Trouble's actually going to listen for a second here to start that uh, Spartan laser. So that this next Spartan laser shot will be a nice collateral with this group. Beautiful. And then now all Trouble has to do is clear out the rest of the enemies that spawned here while also going up this ridge to activate a trigger for when they're all dead. 27, nice. And Trouble's also using a sniper rifle here. Uh, there's a couple strats you can do for the beginning. Uh, some would require the SMG, uh, some with the sniper rifle. I also do the sniper rifle strats. I find I'm just more consistent with them. Sorry for blinding. I, uh, I turned my night vision on in specific sections to make it easier for me to like C. And now basically the goal here is to just clear out as many enemies as possible, as quick as possible, until we hear a line of dialogue and such from Mickey. Garbage Halo character, by the way, if you have the books. If it helps, I haven't read the books, and I also find him kind of annoying in this game, because he likes to blow me up in a later level pretty often. Yep, same thing happened to me on a pace run for trophy. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll definitely bring that up when we get to that level. It's, uh, it's not as uncommon as you would hope. Just to uh, fill you in on what he did, spoiler alert, incoming, um, Mickey got the the rookie killed Cover me, after ODST. And that's why we don't like him. Now that the door is open, Trouble's just going to head on in and we're going to get this next wave fight started as soon as possible. First we got to teleport Mickey in. Boop. There he is, and then now you'll see Trouble throwing this grenade here. Uh, hopefully this next one here makes us that Mickey stops, and there we go. Dialogue means the next section started and everything's able to go. That trick's RNG, I swear. <laughs> Doesn't work half the time. I did the same exact thing twice. Yeah, if that nade doesn't work, then Mickey kind of like runs out and then runs back in and then it'll start. It takes way too long. It's just a big time loss if that happens. It loses 15 seconds. So something else to uh, note on this level. This level is mainly on a timer. You just need to get like waves done really fast in order to beat the timer. This right here is not on a timer. This is based totally off of how fast I kill these enemies. Which is also based off of RNG. When going for like top level times. Which in my case, it determines if I get sub 8 or not. Yep, and you'll notice with the first wave there, uh, Trouble was looking at his map to determine which side the first wave was going to come out of, because as far as I know, it's complete RNG whether it comes out left or right side, so just once you do that, and then the waves are generally the same, just switching side to side at different intervals for the uh, which enemy spawn, and pretty straightforward from there. Sometimes they split, though. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what fully causes them to split, but I've had that happen to me a couple of times as well. Sub 5 clear, that's really good. Sub 8 pace. Now, unless you really mess something up, the rest of the level is essentially on a timer, and from here on out, it should be pretty consistent throughout. Yep. Here, uh, people go different ways about this. It doesn't really matter how you go about it. I just like to throw a grenade at all those guys and get this brute shot, because you're going to be needing this later. 
Yeah, and basically you want to just take out these enemies as quick as you want, but uh, you basically want them just all to be dead before uh, the next section, which it gives you a lot of time to do so, so there's not really too much of a worry here. Yeah, so that's dependent on this uh, this phantom despawning. So as you can see, this guy is just chilling here. I can just kill him whenever. And you'll notice Trouble has plenty of time to go back, just wait, and then you'll know it's fully over once uh, Mickey says a line of dialogue. Actually, it starts a bit before. You can watch. You can stand up here and watch the the cops spawn down there, right there, and that's what starts uh, this part. That's that's how you know uh, when everything's dead and it's gonna progress. And that cop right there spawns. I'll learn something new every day. I did not know that actually. I just figured it was the Mickey dialogue. Yeah, no, that elevator starts coming up before the Mickey I says this thing. I'm gonna go for the nair. Yeah, this will prove if the run is legit or not. Uh, getting yeah. a nair on the drones that come up here. This is my splice check, even though this is shots fired offline. <laughs> And there's the nair. Yep, only one times. But we got the nair. Nair is short for uh, Achillean nair, by the way. If you're not a Halo player. And if you don't know what Achillean nair is, it's uh, 10 kills all within 4 seconds of each other. Not too difficult in campaign, especially in a lot of uh, levels in this game. Here we're gonna stick this guy, throw a frag like that. And we're just gonna clear enemies here, because even though this area is on a timer, you still have to have a certain amount of enemies dead in order for that pelican to spawn right there. You also don't want to be taking damage here for what I'm about to do right here. Also, this is not sub-8. Yeah, so Trouble's gonna throw a frag. Root shot jump and just barely make it to the pelican. Pretty good Oni. I would take that in a in a full game attempt. Oh yeah, me for sure. I'd be a, among my top ten right there probably. And uh, this is the streets where I have the worst driving imaginable. This streets is probably the hardest one to drive on. Especially there's this uh, one section, uh, I think the community likes to call it Tony Hawk. Yeah, you that's, have to, that's like, a game you speed run, right? Yeah, I used to for a little while. Uh, but uh, there's a fun little uh, rail you got to do a little grind on and uh, try to fall down from. And there's ways to do it really fast, but um, we'll see how Trouble does. Let's, let's give it a look. See the 50 50. Oh, oh wow, pretty that good. was very okay. nice. That this was is very really nice. good streets. Okay, I thought I would, I thought I was gonna have horrible driving, but I guess not. <laughs> uh, the streets will now be de determined if I skill issue these grenade jumps right here, which is slightly faster than going up the stairs. And I very did not nice. skill didn't issue to, it. Did not have to take the stairs of shame. Okay, now here's the first <laughs> reset heavy level. This level sucks. <laughs> so yeah, this is Kazingo Boulevard. The first thing that Trouble's going to be want to be doing here is uh, going through this middle section and getting a plasma pistol from uh, one of the enemies here. This plasma pistol will be used later for a trick. And uh, the trick can be pretty tricky. Uh, and... Hopefully it all goes well. Now we're going to rocket this ghost right when it starts dropping down so it comes down quicker and the brute will be dead so we can pick it up quick. And then just drive through basically to the next section. Lucky. That's 50-50. And then over here, picking up a beam rifle. That'll go along with our plasma pistol for this upcoming trick. Oh my god, every ghost is driving into me. Hopefully the ghost doesn't shoot me. 
Should get a checkpoint. Yep. yep, got a checkpoint. Nice. So kill the marine and kill a ghost there. That causes a banshee to spawn in. That grenade is hopefully going to get a marine. And we're going to EMP this banshee out of the sky. Got to watch out for that ghost. Perfect. Two that was cycle. a very quick, really nice. very quick banshee grab. So now we have the banshee. We're going to just go against this wall, which lets us go out of the map. Go back in the map. Hit that trigger right there. And then that'll begin this uh, end fight here in the final area. And we'll have a banshee to clear it, so it'll be very nice. Which this is also, just like on Oni Alpha Sight, a timer that you have to clear enemies on. And yeah, you just you just spray down the enemies. You can kill them while they're in the phantom if you look at them in a specific way. You'll see me do that on the second phantom because I know how to do it better there. I know the angle better. Oh, this wraith is not dying. <laughs> Fortunately, this first wave, I, I believe both waves are... The second wave is maybe not as generous, but this first wave is super generous with time. Yep, because you have to wait it, for this phantom to go despawn. Yeah, it takes a I've long had time. It, I've had it where I've literally got power drained by brutes and fell to the ground for 10 seconds and came back up and I still beat that timer, so it's very generous. Yeah, sometimes the... The, the turret of that wraith will hop out of the wraith as you kill it, and he'll have a power drain, which is a piece of equipment that you can use in Halo 3, but you can't use it in this game, only brutes can. And it pretty much just EMPs your vehicle. And here, as you can see, I'm able to shoot these guys while in while on the Phantom. And yeah, you just have to clear out these remaining enemies. Usually three Dracolas drop there, but I killed them through the, the Phantom. And now we just need to wait for the Phantom to despawn. And ten and a half seconds after it despawns, that's a 324. Yeah, we gotta wait for Dutch to walk over and then just chill beside him for a few seconds and the level will end. And yeah, 324, you were right. Hey, Rylum, we getting a ghost? Ah, uh, yes. Coming up in these next streets, there's a chance to get a ghost. Uh, I heard many different numbers on what the probability is. Uh, my probability would say I'm most likely not getting one. It is very unlikely. But if you do get a ghost, I believe it's an overall 10-second time save over the course of the rest of the run. Yes, it is. And I believe the community has agreed upon the ghost being one in five. I can believe that. Yeah, I can see that. I could so be wrong see about that, though. Is. No ghost. No ghost today, unfortunate. No ghost ever. I never get ghost. It's because I got it in my PB. And as we blaze through these streets, which are, of course, a lot quicker with this mongoose, we're entering NMPD HQ. I hate this level. I almost quit this speedrun like five different times because this level is so frustrating to learn. This level has a lot of parts to it. So much so that I've watched two videos on it. Two very lengthy videos. And I still don't fully quite get it myself. Oh, Early part, that's the which... best cone launch I've ever had. Woo! That is the best cone a... launch I've ever had. That was a very nice cone launch. The beginning section here that Trouble's currently running in with that beautiful cone launch is pretty straightforward. You just run through the level normally. Uh, do a couple grenade jumps to get through areas quicker. Do a nice cone launch like we saw. Cone launches are much like uh, debris launches where grenade sends object into you and gives you lots of speed. Yeah, and also worth noting that these kind of debris launches and cone launches, they're they're very very powerful in ODST specifically, just because of the I believe it's because of the weight or the mass of the actual ODST player character. They just launch you far. Yeah, you weigh a lot less than the chief, which is factually correct in the lore. Bungie was smart. And uh, there's multiple other changes with the ODST 
such as movement speed is slower, jump height is lower. Um, I believe damage is lower as well. But now here comes the ending. Yeah, so right on this bridge here, you'll see uh, Troubles walking on the left side of the bridge. Oh, that helps. Uh, well, that's supposed to help with uh, <laughs> not letting these Banshees spawn here. They're going to shake the bridge right here. And they're just more Banshees to kill during the end fight. But we're coming up to this end fight here. And this is where all the knowledge of this level has to come together. Because it's got a lot of rules to how you can do it quickly. Dutch, look away from the Banshee. Thank you. Okay, okay, Dutch, you don't you don't need to go that far down. Now, as I mentioned earlier, there are two uh, very lengthy videos that cover how to do this end fight. Uh, one of them's about an hour, another one's about an hour and 15 minutes. And as I said, for this three-minute end fight, I somehow still fully don't get it. Uh, the easiest advice I could give is... Just make sure there's not a lot of Banshees alive. Just take down Banshees. But past that, uh, there's going to be three different spawns uh, throughout this uh, fight here. There's, the second wave is always the same, though, here. It's uh, coming up here soon. That first wave, there's a Phantom and some Banshees, of course, that spawn. And the, sec the next wave will only spawn once there's a certain number of Banshees dead after the Phantom's gone. And if you don't beat that, there's like a 10 second timer. So the first thing we yeah, want to do here- Yeah, I didn't here, have enough killed, so I lost time. Yeah, so we want to get these phantoms down as soon as possible here. And make sure there's not enemies alive, or at least not enemies alive here as possible. So we can make the next wave spawn after that. And it'll be uh, left, right, or center. Uh, what was the first wave again? Did you know what side that was? I think center. Okay, I think it just spawned center now. Oh, no, it was right. Okay. So it was right side, yeah. So first we did right side, now it's center, so the last one will be left side. Oh, I did not get a good roll on the Spartan laser. That's bad. I don't have Spartan laser for this. So basically, Trouble's trying to take down these Banshees before taking down the Phantom. And then you want to try to take down the Phantom after there's enough Banshees gone, but then also the Phantom tends to fly away, and uh, you'll have to wait for the despawn timer on the Phantom for that. And as Trouble said, very low on Spartan laser ammo, but the final wave will be on left side, which isn't too Spartan laser heavy, or doesn't really have to be if you don't want it to be. Unfortunately, it looks like Buck is on the turret over here, which is very good. Um, Mostly because if you have Mickey on this turret, you have to make sure he gets really far away. Because uh, he will shoot a rocket at you, and he will blow you up. It is also bad if Buck gets in the way, because if he stands in front of your turret, the missile will, uh, will blow you up. Yep, so using the missile pod here to take down the Banshees on this side. Uh, we're going to take down these uh, Phantoms as well if we can. These Banshees aren't being cooperative. And it looks like probably could get quite a bit of shots off on this Phantom. It flies very slowly away, unfortunately, which means it'll take a little while to despawn. Oh, nope, it's been destroyed. So the final Phantom that we're going to be seeing come up here. Very quick spawn on that one, which is good. That means enough Banshees were dead. And that's the end of the level. If you actually kill that Phantom a bit too early, you soft lock. That's a pretty yeah. average NMPD. Yeah, I believe there's a lot of runners that are a lot faster at NMPD compared to Trouble and I. <laughs> but that's pretty. that'd be pretty good for one of us to get in that run for sure. I would reset. <laughs> I, I kind of I kinda have to reset because uh, that level has my most time save in order to get trophy. Mm. Well, if I were Trouble, I would not reset because Trouble's favorite level is coming up next. Yep. I have a uh, pretty good time on this next level. I did ghost pathing there for whatever reason. 
I don't think I lost too much time doing that, though. You want to go in the middle there when you have the mongoose? Yeah, I think maybe a second or so, but nothing too major. Oh, so we got more streets driving. Oh, oh tried yeah, yeah, to thread the needle. <laughs> Happens to the best of us. Yo, the beam rifle boosted me. Let's go. Saved a frame. And now we're coming up to Kikawani Station. This is Trouble's favorite level. Definitely not mine. If you've ever watched a Halo Runs Relay, you've seen me screw Johnny, this up. But that's okay if you haven't. I'm going to have to have you commentate this entire well, level. Because I'm going to be focusing up. Alright, so Trouble's focusing up. First, he's staying back here to get a checkpoint after killing those grunts. He's going to shoot this brew twice so that it goes down. And doing a nice little nade jump over there so we can make it to the other side. Uh, killing that grunt will cause it so that these enemies start piling out of this uh, phantom here. And Trouble's going to fly over here to get a checkpoint, hopefully. Let's uh, see if that comes up for him. Yep, we got a checkpoint. And now that those enemies piled out, this phantom's on the way out. So we're going to go on top of this phantom and try to exit it at a relatively specific time. So that now we're actually out of bounds. And we actually have this banshee out of bounds now as well. First try, that was very nice by Trouble. Unfortunately, now that we're out of bounds, we actually have to go back inbounds to hit a tr couple triggers here to make sure the level actually progresses. A very nice trigger hit there, so now that uh, we can go to the next spot here and hit another trigger. And you'll notice that uh, Trouble pulls out the beam rifle here and is going to try to get the door here and also shoot this squid thing twice. The purpose for that is, uh, once we get back to this Banshee, a properly delayed checkpoint. That squid's very quick to kill. And once that squid's gone, this phantom starts to take off. And second verse, same as the first. We use that one to get out of the map as well. And we're going to be heading over to hit some more triggers. That was also first try. I don't expect anything less from the Kikawani goat here. My nails exists. Oh yeah, no, there's nails. <laughs> so now Trouble's going to hit a couple more uh, or triggers here. And once this one's here, everything will spawn in. And now we can go right to the end of the level. This is a very quick level once you know these out of bounds. So we're just going to head through this door. And get a nice little angle over here so that we can uh, shoot these squid things here, blowing them all up, and that will end the level. 210, nice. 210, very nice. I think my gold in full game is a 202, which is absolutely insane. Like, I, I'm, like, in disbelief of that. Yeah, my full game best is a 212, and my IL PB is a 159, so I'm I'm not touching those times. <laughs> and once and the streets is over, we are done with half the game. Yeah, you could consider this the fastest level in any Halo game right here. It's uh, about 19 seconds. Let's see, yep, 19 seconds. Even faster on a Ghost if you had one. 16, I think 15 is the best. I think so, yeah. And now we move on to into Data Hive, and there's only two levels left in the run, but this is almost considered the halfway point of the game. Yeah, that is because uh, the next two levels, including this one, the next two levels are the longest in the game, and one of them is the longest in the franchise, which is the final level. Spoiler alert. <laughs> so here in Data Hive, we're going to be uh, probably doing a few little launches. We're going to be doing some slide jumps. Uh, Trouble's going to be trying to hold on to some plasmas, though, uh, usually more towards later in the level, because we're going to need to hold on to those for the next level. These end cone launch could have been better. Oh yeah, that was very nice. So the beginning of Data Hive is relatively... There's definitely ways to go fast. Uh, I know there's a couple people that would call me out if I said there's not a ton of ways to go faster aside from that cone launch, but it's basically just following the path until you, we all know where we're going. We got to find this uh, cop here on the floor that we're on and have a little chat with him. This is a S-tier level, by the way, and whoever says it isn't is wrong. 
I'd give it maybe a A. I don't know about S. Maybe it's just because like, I'm bad at it. Maybe it's just because I'm bad at it. second best level in the game. What do you mean? Mm, I don't know about that. Thanks, trooper. They almost had me. You can have your opinion. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your top three? Go. Oh, my top three. Uh, Uplift, of course, is up there. Um, man, what levels do I like? We got another cone launch coming up here. I got to think about this question more. This one I always find really awkward. That was pretty good. That worked out that well. That was actually very scuffed, so I'm surprised it worked. But yeah, I, I it thought did. that was not going to work at all, but happy that it did. I don't know. The main reason why I run ODST is not necessarily because it has my favorite levels. It's more because all the levels are consistently okay, except for one. That I shall not name until the next level. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you're spoiling. <laughs> um, yeah, the the next level is uh, really bad. Uh, as you see here, I'm just I'm not I'm not only killing these guys just to get them out of my way. I'm killing them so I can get grenades because the more grenades, the better for a room that is upcoming. Uh, because there's a lot of enemies that you need to take care of, and having more grenades equals a faster and easier way to kill enemies. Let's see if we get a good him talking. You're going down to level 22 him talking, that's really good. Yeah, no, that's very good. So now we're going to be moving on to the next sub-level here. Now this section is not very fun on legendary difficulty but on easy we can just we can just cruise through it it's not too bad uh it is also not very fun if your name is zero oh yeah <laughs> zero's had a fun time on this part before and died on easy but you know it happens, it happens. a brute meleeed a object into him and it instantly killed him while he was on pc or on pb pace it's a pretty funny clip. <laughs> and there was a little cone launch there. Uh, got a little bit of speed on it. Not, not, not a whole lot, but anything counts. And here is where you like to use your grenades. Oh, I can't hit the head. Here, yeah, you're going to start off by just unloading your entire carbine. That boot's not dead. Oh, that's it. Very nice. Yeah, so there's actually two jackals there, a brute, and then quite a few drones. I'm not sure the exact number. Six to eight. It's somewhere six in between there, I think. Yeah, something like that. I was going to guess around six or seven. Me, I've never counted, and, so I'm not sure. And right at the beginning there, you'll see a uh, trouble kind of distracted or try to swap weapons with Dare there for a second in order to get her out of the way. She likes to run in your way at the beginning there, and it's just easier to get her out of the way. Because she walks pretty fast, but still slightly slower than you, so you don't want her to be in front of you. Here, I'm going to pray that I get a uh, third grenade, because I very much prefer getting... Uh, Three grenades going in the next level. And if you saw that right there, the brute or something meleeed that uh, that chair, that's exactly what we were talking about earlier with what happened to Zero. Yeah, sometimes the brutes just like to melee things near them, and sometimes they can splatter you. So not a whole lot of fun. And there's still a couple more grunts up ahead that uh, ah. Trouble could potentially get a plasma grenade off of, hopefully. Okay, Rylan, you're gonna decide. Do I go for the checkpoint? I failed in the relay. I failed it on PV pace. Well, I failed in shots, shots fired. I say you should go for the check. I always go for the checkpoint. I will not even be going I for the checkpoint. It. Huh? <laughs> All right. I mean, do whatever you want. That's up to you. You're the runner. Uh, here is the root launch. Rylan, you can explain it. Yep, so uh, basically oh. Trouble's going to climb on top of this after brute-shotting it uh, quite a number of times. 
and then jump with the brute shot as the grenade explodes and you get a nice launch up to the top here very lucky that he got it because uh did not get the checkpoint the safety checkpoint before it it's pretty trick but, uh, don't need it it's really it's not too tough of a trick once you know how to do it and uh yeah that also makes it so you skip all of the drone spawns up here so on legendary that's actually a very nice trick to know because it already saves a lot of time but then you don't have to deal with any enemies up here it's very nice yeah on easy it doesn't really matter yeah it's just a big time save on easy and here the brutes could possibly be very funny but we will see if they will be funny or not yeah, there are three brutes in front of this door here that we have to kill. There's two uh, normal brutes and one with uh, one chieftain with a graph hammer. We're gonna want that graph hammer. Oh, oh, that's bad. That's, that's a oh, revert. Yeah. yeah, that that box that that chieftain hit. You really don't want that chieftain hitting that box or moving it whatsoever, because we will be using that later. So we're gonna try this clear again. Very nice shot. That brute's dead. And then once Dare's dialogue ends, nice little launch with the grav hammer there to make sure Dare is airborne so that this door actually opens sooner. It's supposed to open when Dare gets to the door and then says access granted, but if you launch Dare, the game's like, where's Dare? Just start the next area. Terrible hammer ammo, by the way. The still has shields. But they won't and there you'll see trouble getting Dare stuck in the corner and then launching the Engineer up. We need them to stay in this room for this next trick to work fully properly. Now we're going to get a nice little checkpoint here. All my Use homies the... hate Dare, by the way. <laughs> Use the Brute Shot to move this box in the right position and oh. do a... Ooh. And we're going to use this uh, box to do a nice little hammer launch to the next section over here. That'll... That's not working. You don't Hurry. think so? Uh, yeah. yeah, no. Yeah, no, yeah, revert. You want to get over to this next section really quick. You want to basically launch right into there because then it skips a whole lot of waves of fighting that you have to do. That's working. That'll work. That'll work. Over here. Hurry. I like to delay just to be safe. Uh, I think I killed sub 10, but... It is whatever. Uh, here I'm unsure of, but I think you need to run up here to hit a trigger to get these guys to teleport faster. I, I don't know if that's true or not. But... Yeah, I'm not sure how that works. I just come over here and hope for the best. <laughs> and now you'll see uh, trouble pushing this uh, coil over here. I'm gonna try to line it up for a nice little uh, another hammer launch once again to this next section. Terrible ha hammer ammo, just to say it again. I can't speak. Yeah, do you know how much that hammer spawned with? 50, 50 something? 51? Yeah, if it's any number in 50, it's a horrible hammer spawn. It can I spawn can... from. It, it, it's in between 50 and 100, I believe. I don't think 100. I think it's like a high 80. Oh, is 90. Like the highest it's 90. Get. Yeah, 90. 90 sounds like the highest. Oh. Yeah, which I have terrible hammer luck personally, so I understand the struggle. Virgil, get out of the way, please. <laughs> Virgil's causing some problems here with this setup. There we go. That that's yeah, that might work. Oh yeah. Well, that's some distance for sure. Then once we get into this next section, I'm just going to do a little turn around and then turn around again. Oh, what? Oh. Okay, Virgil well, there's a little time far less. away. We'll just waste a couple more seconds. Virgil's supposed to be in the elevator, which is what triggers the end of the level. But now we're in. We're about to begin the greatest level in the game. Our friend uh... Coastal Highway. <laughs> And here's where I'm possibly going to splice because you can get soft locked on this, or you can't get soft locked, but. Agreed. I'll stay with the asset. Um, can have very bad RNG and not get a single grenade drop. Which is a costly revert because you have to look for the grenades, and then if you don't get them, you have to. 
trying to think. What? Yeah, would you have to do the first launch all over again? Oh. Uh, yes, I would. Uh... So the first section here, very simple. Just walk on through. It's on legendary. It's a little bit more involved. Not too much more. Legendary, you just have to do it faster so all the brutes don't congregate and take you down all at once. On legendary, I like to carry over a beam rifle and snipe the the grunts up top of that tower. Other than that, nothing really else can happen to you. Yep, and you'll see uh, Trouble did a little turn around again there to make everyone spawn over light. here by the doors. An right and let's here. see if we can do some Virgil surfing. Yep. Whoop. Very nice. Very nice. We'll need the alien to power on the switch. And here comes the worst trick in the franchise. <laughs> so what Trouble's going to do here is drive this Warthog over to the end of the highway here. And uh, one of the goals along the way is to take down a Grunt that has a Fuel Rod Cannon as well. Uh, just because it can get in the way, it's very troublesome. And probably want to do that before we get into the first uh, first part of the trick here. So yep, yeah, there's the there's the fuel rod cannon one there. Trouble got it. Very nice. And you'll notice we're moving this warthog out of the way. We're gonna get a nice lineup, and this is where we're gonna launch this warthog out of the map. That looks like it can work. It's got a land. Oh yeah, that's it. That's a very nice first launch. So we got. We want to oh, get that, that one. Oh, that, that was the fuel me. rod grunt. That is very oh. lucky. Well, not that he picked that up, but. And we already got plasma grenades, which is also very lucky. So we can line up for the second launch here because we want to actually get two warthogs out of the map, and we want to be in this one when it gets out of the map. So Trouble's going to try to make sure there's no grunts around before going over this next trigger. Activate the trigger and start meleeing to get a good lineup going. And then that checkpoint will activate. So we're going to chuck a frag and a plasma and then another plasma. That'll launch out of the map. That's not far enough, unfortunately. There's a death barrier there. And this launch is very, I wouldn't even say precise, it's just inconsistent. It's, uh, it has a lot of issues, so Trouble will be trying this a few times for sure. It is, uh, so precise that it is RNG. <laughs> That's what I like to call it. And yeah, if you hit that top thing there on the way over, it's basically guaranteed you're not going to make it far enough. And you'll see trouble moving a bit before each launch, just trying to test out different angles to see what might work. And this is part of the reason why this uh, level right here is a run killer. Tossed an extra nade that time, see if that would help. Uh, it was a little too much juice on that one, actually. That one. That one might might be salvaged. Yeah, nope, but... it's flying. <laughs> That's the unfortunate part too. You have to make sure it lands the right way, which is also random. Oh, the landing part is RNG. Yeah, that's below the belt. Oh. Maybe that that's too low. No. Yeah, you're gonna die. Going back to three. Mm, I think you're having better luck with the four. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, Buck, I agree. No. <laughs> Did Buck say, "Whoa, what just happened again"? Yep. Yeah, I know that feeling. Oh, Pause. That could, that could work. Don't. Okay. Yep. We're good. Okay. So, yeah, we're out. so now that we have this warthog out of the map, Trouble's gonna drive it to the elastic barrier and then break out of it by hopping out of the hog. We did that a few that... times in this uh, uh, speed. Oh my god. Oh, that is lucky. Okay. Or is it? Oh yeah, you're good. You're good. Okay. Thank goodness. So. 
Unfortunately, that first hog, that one is stuck in the map once you use it to break out of the elastic barrier. Fortunately, that's why we launched a second hog so that we could drive this one around and we're going to be hitting a total of, I believe, nine triggers in two load zones throughout this uh, out of bounds section. So the first trigger here, you just have to drive through the middle over top of it. Uh, each trigger, some of them are pretty similar and some of them are a little different. And this next one, we're going to have to hit a load zone. So uh, you'll see uh, trouble getting out of the Warthog here shortly and hitting a load zone before hitting the next trigger. And once it jumps over here, see, loading done. And we're ready to move on to the next trigger. You want to stick this... more to the the right on the first two triggers. The later ones, you want to go through the middle. Yeah, it's... Uh, this driving, it looks relatively easy. And once you know it, it kind of is. But it's also very tricky because any wrong move and you'll be teleported back in the map. And sometimes it'll give you a checkpoint just completely killing this trick, so... You got to be careful. This one, you kind of want to just slide down the wall here and you'll get the next uh, trigger there. Very nicely done. Uh, just for reference, this trick saves up to four minutes and uh, uh, shout outs to the skilled again. Uh, actually, I didn't shout out him out earlier, but shout out to skilled. Uh, person I'm, I've set as my rival, he does full path. So I'm comparing against a, a full path time right now, and currently we're plus one against doing the game, do, doing the level without going out of bounds. But as you see me hit these triggers, that time will go down and down, and you'll see like how much time each trigger saves. It's really good to uh, to know. It's really useful to have someone set as your rival that doesn't do this bad trick. Is skilled the uh, the second fastest Canadian ODST runner? Uh, did you beat his time? Yeah. Then yes, he is. You. <laughs> yeah, we have the <laughs> Canadian world record holder right here. <laughs> the Canadian country record holder, yeah. Although skilled is a lot faster at this game than me, just doesn't do this trick, which does save, as Trouble said, a uh, a lot of time. And this next trigger, this one can be a little bit tricky. So you're going to see trouble slow right down and go really close to this wall. That was, whew, I would have slowed down even more just to be safe. That was very well done. Uh, if you go too fast in there, you're basically guaranteed you're going to teleport back in. There is a way to do it while getting out of the hog, but it, it's slower. We like to have speed here. Yep. And uh, this gate right here is known for being garbage on Legendary because of these Banshees. This gate right here is why I do not have a Legendary IL time. <laughs> uh, I, actually, is... I actually just recently got a Legendary time because uh, Wingman wanted me to do that. <laughs> and then this next trigger here, you want to just you want to just approach it there and just poke it. That'll let you go to the next section. Wingman, of course, being... Ooh, nice little flip. Unfortunately, uh, it didn't get worse. Wingman, of course, being the world record holder for this game in both Easy and Legendary, and I think has trophy on every single IL as well. Just absolutely insane at this game. Yes, he does hold it, every trophy on every IL, except for Streets, but Streets isn't a real IL, so... <laughs> and uh, as you can see, I'm now 13 seconds faster than uh, full path, so I am still saving time despite our, yeah, e even though all those fails with the, the hog, I'm still going faster than full path. Yeah, and just saved another 11 seconds there. This, this trick really does save a lot of time, so once you get to a certain area or a certain time, once you're getting it good enough, you want to learn this trick, and it kind of ruins the run a bit because it's kind of like I've had I've been streaming my runs now for past week or so I've done about I don't know 11 runs and all of them died in this level so <laughs> that's why we're ooh, yeah you want to make sure you really slow down there especially once you get around this corner because you'll get a checkpoint and I've had to double revert on that corner multiple times in the past that was almost bad 
But this this level's definitely a run killer. Now 49 seconds ahead of uh, Skilled's time in this level. And now we just got this... Yeah, oh, just this no. one more trigger okay. here right through the middle. And coming up right here is the best part of the legendary speedrun, where Dare can just die if you're a little bit too slow. Right yeah, here, they're... I've lost like multiple different runs just to soft locking because Dare wouldn't stop dying as I'm yeah. going through these rings right here. There is a chieftain down there. That's part of the reason why you can try rocketing him to help increase your chances from what I've heard, but it's never really worked out too favorably for me either, so... Yeah, that's also why this trick is also just not great on Legendary as well. She just kind of dies sometimes. Which is why all my homies hate Dare. Fun fact, I've actually had Dare die in the first section on Easy. Really? I have no idea how. That's I think crazy. it was because I still had the grunt with the fuel rod alive and somehow it just melted her. I have no idea what happened. Fortunately, it was just a practice run, just to practice the trick, but I, I don't know what was going on. And now we made it to the final end fight, so first all you had to do is just take down those grunts. We're going to wait for Buck to teleport in and say the area is clear, then Dare and Virgil are going to come in, and the end, end fight will begin, and there will be a few ways to that. Here you are able to speed this area up by pushing the woman with this warthog, which is why you saw me rocket it over. Yep, and now that dare is over there, the first phantom's going to start flying in. And there it is. This first wave is going to be a mixture of grunts and brutes. So once it fully touches down here, Trouble's going to throw that plasma and a frag. Frag on this side too, use the rocket launcher to take down a lot of enemies. And then try to clear up what's left. I really like that strat with the plasma and frag. I actually don't do that and I feel like I should after watching that. I never get, uh, I never get plasma grenades, so I usually just throw frags. Uh, okay. And then once that phantom's out and all the enemies are cleared, then the next wave will be starting up shortly. That one just contains uh, just a wave of jackals, a mixture of jackals with carbines and with uh, beam rifles. And basically, as long as Trouble does everything right here, the rest of the levels pretty much on a timer. If you kill these jackals too early, you soft block for whatever reason. I did not know that. Yep, I have lost a run to that once. And once all those... Oh, there's one more jackal somewhere. Whoa, he's... Whoa, look at his speed. And once all the jackals are dead, we're going to reload this rocket launcher to take down these two hunters. This is a brutal fight against these hunters. I have no idea how Trouble's going to take them down. Okay, the hunters are dead. <laughs> I threw my nade too early there. Oh, I mean, it doesn't really matter because you still have to wait on... Yeah, you still got to wait for the phantom. Yeah, it's got to be gone anyways before the next wave comes in. And this last wave takes a while to come in. And that's because uh, two wraiths come in, which can actually cause something very funny to happen. That happened to uh, my homie Sean. Shoutouts to Adversary. Lots of shoutouts today. Yeah, I'm trying to think of how long ago that happened, because I think it was before I joined Halo Runs, and it's still talked about. It was definitely happened before I joined as well. Basically, like, I'll, I'll explain I'll explain it once uh, we get there. Yeah. Here, I'm just going to throw a plasma grenade as I see that guy fall, then rocket. Oh, he did a weird animation. That, yeah, I thought he was going to jump at you, but no, he did some weird crisscross applesauce at you. 
I just want to take out the rest of these brutes here. Looks like there's one still over here. Oh, this has been happening every single run where he's just hiding. I think we didn't we didn't lose time though. We're good. No, didn't lose any time at all. They're all gone, and uh, the the squad haven't spawned in yet. They just spawned in now. Now that they spawned in, they're gonna fly over and uh, help take down these wraiths. And uh, what happened to Sean is. Uh, these guys sometimes take a very long time to kill the wraiths, and you lose time. So you just want to shoot rockets at those wraiths through that like little hole in the glass, right there. You can kind of see it. Yeah, it's extremely rare for them to be slowed down, but you know, best to make the best of it and hope they come over. And then once they fly over here and they stop overhead, you just wait for the end of the level. And that is it. GG's. Time. Thanks for you watching. Can 